and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Just bear with me for a minute. I'm going to check my iPad, make sure everything's catching up. Caught up, yep, looks like that's there. Let's have a look at the volumes. Oh, yeah, that looks all right. Okay, welcome to the craft room, as I said. Um, a sunny day outside, so we've got a bit of sunshine happening there. So hopefully it won't go too far over the middle of my work area. But if it does, um, we'll just move to the left. It doesn't matter too much. Already been in the, in the craft room this morning. I've got ink everywhere, so just forgive me a wee bit uh, there. Um, okay, uh, online exclusives. Wow, they hit uh, our online store uh, during the week. And uh, on top of the already beautiful uh, Hello Irresistible Suite uh, collection, um, uh, which we've already looked at a couple of times, there are some amazing um, products there. I'm going to uh, just uh, show you at least two of them with actual crafting today, but I thought I'd show you the others that I got in my order as well, just to, um, just to whet your appetite a wee bit. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use today, but I definitely will. This cute little guy here called Rhino Ready Bundle. Got some cute little rhinos there. Never thought of rhinos as cute, but they're quite cute. Some really nice little um, uh, sentiments there as well. Birthday, all those sorts of things. Great for kids' cards, I reckon. I'm going to give that a bit of a go. He's got some long grass that he can, uh, he can hide in there as well. Uh, cute little bird. So, and it's got dyes, which is a bonus. So you can colour those in and die cut them, which is really good. I have a feeling there's a couple of extra little dyes in there as well. I think I've seen a leaf, sort of a tropical leaf being used. Not quite sure. Let's have a look. This is our first look together. Okay, cool. Oh, there's lots there. There's a, looks like a tree. Sort of these, I bet you they fit together to make some sort of rocky outcrop. There's our dinos uh, dinosaurs, our rhin rhinoceroses, um, a leaf, um, little party hat. Yeah, so the three rhinos in the grass definitely are, and then there's some leaves and trees and things as well. So awesome. So we'll definitely get him out over the next couple of weeks to show you. Now keep in mind the online exclusives are not in uh, any catalogue. They are just online. So uh, if you um, want to have a look at them, the whole range, you've got to pop on to my online stores you actually go to um, when you want in the online store you go to products and then scroll down the products and there's a whole category just online exclusives and it's got all these extra special um, products in there uh, also we have and i was really excited to see returning two circle punches now grab these because i think they will probably go fairly quickly um, it, there's a one and three quarter inch and a two inch circle punch. Just got a lover punch, so I'm going to be using those um, in classes and things because I just find it so much easier to punch out 30 circles than to run 30 pieces of paper through my um, cut and emboss machine. So, yeah, one two inch punch and uh, one and three quarter inch punch. There you go. If you missed them before, they're back. I, yeah, and as I say, grab them because I think they will probably fly out. Um, we also have some really lovely ribbon. This is what I had in my order anyway. I popped the order in on Wednesday morning and put it in as express if anyone's wondering why, how I got them so quickly. I paid the bit extra and got them express, so they arrived yesterday, which was pretty amazing actually. This is in a twin pack or a combo pack. It's gold and silver trim, uh, one-eighth of an inch trim, so they reckon it's three mils, but it looks pretty pretty skinny to me. And it's got, it's got like a very, that's got like a very vanilla central with a trim of gold either side. And it's just pure gold the other side. So, yeah, that would be really nice. I reckon that's going to bow up quite nicely. And the other one, I won't open that, but that's a, that's a silver version of the same thing. So really, really nice there. So they are in the online exclusives as well. Um, okay, and the other things that I got, um we're going to see them now so that's just the, the several items that we're not going to use today but um the others we're going to actually craft with right now so i know i popped one card up in the event i've actually created two more so we're actually going to do three cards today 
So uh, settle in with a cup of coffee. We might be a little bit longer than our three quarters of an hour that we usually are together. If I if you have to pop off anywhere, just come back and watch the replay later. Okay, so the first card I'm going to do is using the Tropical Leaf Bundle. And this is one of the online exclusives, obviously. That's what we're doing. So a really nice sort of tropical leaf. Some stems, things, or you could use them just as uh, horizon-y sort of watery thing, those things there. The, the leaves have some veins in the middle, which I haven't actually used. And a really interesting font with those um, sentiments as well. So we've got a thanks so much, love you lots, hello, and some noughts and, cro noughts and crosses. <laughs> yeah, crosses and hugs, kisses and hugs there as well, which I have we haven't had for a long time as well. So, and got to love it, no dies, but an awesome punch. So that's really good. Well, oh, bird's just landed right outside my window. Go away, bird. Oh, you can stay, but don't make a noise. Okay, so that's the punch, we, the, the bundle we're going to work with first of all. So this is the first card I made and the one that I started um, mucking around with here. So it's got some of that really nice um, specialty vellum that we talked about last week, um, that we talked about last week. And um, so that, I've got that as a layer on there as well. Um, when I finished this one, I decided it was a wee bit plain and you couldn't quite see that vellum to its best effect. So I'm actually going to pop a colour underneath it just to make it stand out a bit. But we're going to go with the same um, of those excellent leaves there. And, uh, this little spray of flower um, leaves here is just from it's just in um, from framed florets so I, I've thrown that in as well so let's get started with this one okay so this is our little just a die cut from framed florets I've actually done that in evening evergreen so that's one of our retiring colors so if you like your evening evergreen you better grab your refills and your paper and your ink and things before um, before the end of April because it will be gone in May well, we think it's gone in May. Who knows? We're actually going to have a colour refresh. So that everything with colours is slightly up in the air. Okay, so I've, instead of my white card base, I've decided to go a soft sea foam card base. Um, there we are. And this is going to be a landscape card. So we're going that way. So it's a, my normal size soft sea foam card base. I've been cleaning everything in the in the craft room with that beautiful orange power, or orange oil, getting the stickiness off things. So I have to do my blocks and things next. Everything smells like it's like an orange, like a, like I've been um, going to soccer with the boys on a Saturday morning and they've got their oranges out. Um, yeah, so it's really nice. But it did, it did take a bit of the ink off my um, bone folder there. I didn't realise it would do that. Anyway, all good. Uh, then I have a white a layer of white. I just thought that um, too much of the soft um, soft succulent would um, would be a bit too much. And then I've got a piece of designer series paper. Now this is from the and I told myself that I wouldn't forget that I have. This is from the not the two tone four. This is from the other online exclusive from the Hello um, Irresistible. Uh, designer series paper so that's one of the another online exclusive we've already looked at that um, collection to quite a, an extent so I'm going to use this really soft um, soft sea foam um, leaf design and I'm going to pop that that's just on my white layer and as you can see you can probably see why I wanted that white layer in there just to break it up a wee bit now I've got our vellum I'm going to try and find the right way up cut it a little bit smaller just so that it sits in the centre of that piece of soft sea foam designer series paper. Not that you have to soften soft sea foam anymore. It is pretty soft, but I really, I really like that vellum over the top. A bit addicted to vellum over the top of things at the moment. Oh, another piece of cardstock for inside. And then I've got my cardstock to um, punch and um, um, stamp and punch. Okay, so we might as well pop these all on. That comes the glue. So the white layer first. And I've just gone straight one eighth of an inch smaller with the layers. Um, I was tempted to make this one slightly smaller to see more of the soft sea foam, but 
in the end I couldn't decide so I just went with my first I was wondering whether that would be a nice way up actually I think you're right I'm going to um so I'm going to give you guys a choice that's the other side of the paper it's just sort of a blotchy splattery color and that is with the leaves I did think the leaves would sort of sort of flow through to the leaves at front so we'll go with that one with the vellum on top or do we go that one which is just splotchy with the vellum on top I'm going to pop my lights on because oh, by the looks of my iPad it's a wee bit dark in here it's so sunny outside but dark in here the sun starts on the no, it's, yeah gets a bit high and you can't see so we've got the splotchy side and the leafy side what do you reckon got Jennifer Jenny says leaves got one vote for leaves leaves two vote for leaves all oh, leaves are winning here somebody will just vote splotchy now leaves leaves okay we definitely leaves I think uh, that's just about everybody who's on that's going for leaves so splotchies you're covered over that was my first thought so you should always go with your, your gut feeling shouldn't you it's just when I saw that other side I thought how pretty it was okay so we're going leaves let me just pop that on there there we are okay so we've got our vellum that's going to pop on there so I'm going to use as usual I'm going to use um, dots with my vellum blue dots she says reaching which she didn't with making three cards today I don't know I won't move the camera but I've got like vast num amounts of stuff over to my left hand side hopefully like a well organized um, production line but we'll wait and see it may be a non well organized production line so I'm just going to pop some glue dots on the back of this vellum. I'm going to try and line them up sort of with the darker design, the, the stripes, so you won't see them. Oh, don't get stuck to there, you guys. So you won't actually see them um, on through as much. You always do a wee bit, but I'm going to move these bottom ones in a touch as well because then they'll be covered by the sentiment box and the leaves so always thinking a wee bit ahead when you're doing your when you're um when you're putting your glue dots on a couple actually got stuck onto my paper there but that's not, not I'm not going to worry too much about that because they'll get covered um, by the the sentiment box and stuff as well so there we are so pop our vellum over the top like that mm, is that straight straightish there we are so that's our vellum layer so that's our card base that's a fairly standard sort of run of the meal card base really isn't it so let's get um, making these lovely leaves okay so there's a big leaf and a little leaf the big leaf is the one that goes with the punch and the little one is actually um, doesn't have obviously yeah it's small enough to fussy cut so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to grab my colors the colors I'm going to use are she says because they've made their way to the bottom of the pile uh, mint macaron pale papaya now pale papaya is also a retiring in color at the moment as I say with the color refresh we don't know whether it's going to be back as a permanent color or not and pear pizzazz so let's see so I'm going to do the two greeny ones the mint macaron and the pear pizzazz in the big one oh, I've got that all blocked up I have to grab a different block I've got all the flowers blocked up for the next leaf, uh, next card so I have to use this okay so this is our pear pizzazz one and I just re-inked my pear pizzazz so it might be quite juicy I'm going to grab a foam mat now I just use the foam mat out of my stamparatus for doing this I know you can get special silicon mats and things but I just, just grab it out 
There we are, that's our pair pizzazz. It's absorbed right down. Yesterday when I first re-inked it, I, I inked up a um, I inked up a stamp and it just was swimming in it, so it's absorbed it right down, which is good. I didn't like it the way it was. Then our mint macaron. That wasn't oh, okay. Julianne's popped that in a difficult angle. Obviously, my punch is going to come up that way, so I need to keep these at the right angle. I don't know how I'm going to go with that one, but anyway, we'll see how we go. So that's the two large leaves. Of that before there's an ink disaster and I'm going to do a small leaf in the pale papaya just to lift that those greens a wee bit now I'm not putting the veins in the middle of them I will experiment with that later on but just at the moment I'm just leaving them just plain and this one's going to be fussy cut so I'll just pop him there on the side okay Sorry to say the F word in front of everybody, the fussy cut word. Just thinking of my next fun fold class. Uh, by the way, fun fold class ends uh, this Friday or coming Friday, not, not yeah, this coming Friday. If you want to pop into that one, if you've already RSVP'd but haven't paid yet, please um, do so. Um, a lot of, some ladies often will pop their name down for something and then not pay so obviously if you don't pay I won't send you a kit um, this is our VIP one some of my VIP ladies I think because I do so many classes I get I get I confuse people the fun fold class is your VIP class so if you're in the VIP club you don't have to pay again unless you really really want to so anyway but no you don't pay again that's a joke okay so i'm just cutting this one i probably should have bought the punch in first but anyway i'm just fussy cutting this one first i've done it on thick white cardstock so it's not quite as easy to cut as normal white as i say he's just a cute little heart shape oh i wonder if he'd fit a heart punch anyway that's all right. It's not that difficult. Now let's bring in our punch. God, I love a punch. There we are. So, yeah, easy as that. Well, oof. And then this one. Now we also do have the stamp camp coming up. So um, if you're interested in that, uh, 12 tutorials and um, 12 different cards by 12 different international uh, demonstrators, including myself. You get the PDF, you get the videos, you get um, some uh, product from the suite as well. This is the Hello Irresistible suite. Um, and, um, yeah, so, and a whole day of crafting, which is the 26th of March if that sounds good please reach out and I'll give you the details so if anyone if ever, anyone has um, RSVP'd and paid for that one I have ordered everybody's um, stuff so don't worry too much about um, missing out it's all been ordered um, which means you might have it sitting around at home for a wee while before the 26th depending on how quickly your orders come out okay let's get bring back our card base yeah. No, Maureen, you're not too late. You're only 18 minutes. <laughs> That's fine. We've only got daylight savings. We've got less than a month to go, so not long now. Okay, so I'm going to pop the same configuration of our little um, leaves here as I did with the other card. So one there pointing down and one sort of pointing upwards sort of thing and then the little pale papaya one off to the side there okay and then the sort of spray of leaves sort of coming up just to break it up a wee bit there 
Yeah, actually, that one might have been nice in vellum as well, maybe come in. But anyway, that's cool. I'm going to stick with what I've done because I know I like it. Then I'm going to um, have a sentiment box come over to the right-hand side there. So I'll grab my scrap of white. Now, I used the... Um, what did I use, guys? <laughs> I haven't got it here. And it's my favourite thing in the whole entire world. Stylish shapes. I used the stylish shapes for that. But it was too big. I decided it was too big, so I'm going to actually stamp that sentiment and cut around it um, rather than cut out a um, user sentiment box. And love you lots is what I'm going to use again. I'm going to grab my um, mint macaron ink back again and do the sentiment in that. Is that big enough? Yes. So it was a fair bit of stamping in the next card so I blocked everything up and then used all my blocks so I'm down to the leftovers okay so that's love you lots don't you I just love that um, that font it's really nice okay so I'm gonna grab my scissors this is always a bit nerve-wracking this part and I'm going to cut around especially because, as I just said, I've used thick cardstock and that's a bit harder to be. Let's see how we go. I might have to do another one in thinner cardstock. So this doesn't come naturally to me. I've seen lots of other people where it does, but... It's um, not one of my natural talents. Not that I have very many of those, but so it's just a matter of following, sort of thinking, following ahead the the pat the what's the word the shape of the letters, and and not doing anything too suddenly so or too sharply. I know um, if you've got a little hint I've seen from someone is that if you've got a cling stamp, you get a little piece of paper that you take off the stamp before you mount it up. And you can actually use that as a template for cutting around it. Or you just use the wonderful sentimental shapes or whatever it's called, the one in the current catalogue that does all that die cutting for you. But that's all right. Nearly there. My nervous chatter as I get this done. Never really knowing how it's going to turn out. That's not too bad. What do you think? I don't think that's too bad. I didn't muck it up too badly anywhere. Okay, so that's going to pop. Oh, that's going to pop there like that. I'm coming from the left to right so let's pop these together just going to glue no actually I decided I wasn't going to glue I'm going to glue dot the leaves because if you notice where you glue the vellum it curls a wee bit so I'm going to actually glue dot all my leaves and um, so it doesn't curl my vellum so let's See how we go with that. Move you off the anyway, a little bit. Off you. It's not going to take a lot of glue dots. Maybe just three. watching the comments as they come in keep telling me where you're watching from if you're a first-time viewer please mention that as well 
do love to see people come on for the first time. Which way have I got that? That way, sort of. It's going to have to move because I won't have room for my pale papaya one. I'll just push that one over that way a wee bit. There we are. Now this one. There we are. That's better. There we are. Nice and fresh, you know, almost like a fresh... Well, I don't know, do you have a fresh tropical day? It always seems a bit humid in the tropics for me, but I'm a bit of a Tassie girl. I'll just pop this one. Okay, now our sentiment. Uh, now this is a bit of an experiment because I did obviously with the first one I did the, the sentiment box that covered everything over. So I'll see how I like this with it not quite as covered over. Yeah, I'm not too, not too in, um, worried about that. I think that's quite good. I don't think that um, looks too untidy there with that cut out sentiment. There we go. Rebecca, you're not a first time viewer at all. We're old friends. We've 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 fought the COVID pandemic together like crusaders. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this up on some dimensionals. It's just big enough for the large dimensionals. May have had to go small if I've gone too much finer. Would have had to go small, I think, but that's okay. Just room for the large ones. No ribbon here. I don't. Know, I haven't seen um, Deb on yet to remind me to do my ribbon, but um, no, no ribbon on this one. No. The soft sea foam ribbon would have been nice, actually. Now I think about it, but I hadn't worked out how to pop it in there, so um, we'll just leave it off since I usually have to think about ribbon quite extensively before I put that. And Monica, you prefers the banner. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the banner would have been okay with the green. Who knows? And actually, I think that needs to come back so it actually covers over. At least with the vellum underneath, you can pull your, your, um, your, your dimensionals off without too much trauma. Except this one's not on the vellum. I might take that back in a wee bit more to the left. Yep, yeah, that's better. Yep, yeah, that's better. Okay, so that's okay. That's fine. It's just two different slants on the same the same issue. But I think that that banner might have been too big even for this design. So I might try one later. This doing the same thing. Okay, so there are uh, some bling. Now, I was a bit up in the air with my bling. There is in the adhesive backed milky dots, one that looks like it has a slight green tinge to it, which I thought might be interesting. This little one on the end here, it might just be gray, but it would probably get the, carry the green through. So, oh yeah, let's have a look. Let's see what you guys, Natural coloured string round round finger. Yes, very nice, Cheryl. That sort of takes the green, doesn't it, quite nicely. Everything else sort of throws a bit of colour, but that actually takes the green quite nice. So I'm going to use those because I hadn't used them before. So we'll use these ones and we'll pop them around. Oh, 
I don't know what colour these are actually supposed to be, but they're nice. I think they're just a grey, to be honest. I'm going to go all out and use five bling. Except I don't know where to use the fifth one. It's because it's a, on the other one, I popped the bling on the sentiment box, but I can't do that this time, so I might have to pop it just somewhere else. Where is it naturally going to go? There. There. Yeah, that will do. Okay. So there we are. I don't like that there. <laughs> Come off. You're not supposed to be there. Probably more there. Yeah, that'll do. That's better. Okay, so that's my first card there. So, um, yeah, so that uses that tropical leaf bundle. I'm going to add a, spare with me, I'm just thinking on my feet, I'm going to add another glue dot up underneath that bling. Just to put that, I um, wasn't quite thinking that far ahead, but to keep that vellum from falling, folding up, I pop a glue dot under there. You won't even see it. Perfect. Lovely. All right. So there we are. That is our tropical leaf stamp set, our bundle. So we've got our leaves and the and the punch. So everyone loves a good punch. So there we are. So that's our first one. Um, contemplating making this bundle my product class for April. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll wait and see. See if anything else attracts my attention over the next couple of weeks. But I think that's going to be the product class. So we'll see. I do quite like how simple it is with the punch and stuff like that. So let's pop that aside. So we'll pop those aside. There's everything there. I'll just put everything away. Bear with me. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I pop some things away. Because as I say, with three cards, if I don't get organised between, we are going to have a absolute disaster on our hands. So that bling, if in case you wanted to know, is the adhesive backed milky dots. The blue is my favourite. As you can see, I've used a fair bit of it. But I think that grey is really nice because it takes the colour of whatever you um you use it on my fallback position was i was going to use iridescent um, jewels okay pop you away pop those on there pop my sentiment back i can clean those up later i'll run the cleaning agent over those once i'm done did another one there that's a spare okay those away put that away don't need that anymore need glue don't know about the dots but I'll keep them there take the card cool okay I'm moving everything behind me that's where you saw me sort of get up and move and we'll come back and start the next card so the next product I'm going to show you is absolutely going to be a favorite from now on I think it's the radiating stitches dies. Now these are these are going to be so handy. I'll show you them first. When they say radiating stitches, because it's the stitching doesn't go long ways, it actually comes out. So it radiates out from the center to the edges. So we've got this awesome big one. So that basically is a whole card size, that one. So there. Um, it just does actually cut out. The patterns into a whole piece of stock um, cardstock it's not a frame so there's no cutting edge on the inside there it just cuts that pattern into a into a layer of cardstock um, but the work good um, pr um, design is this next size one down which has got a smaller stitch on it fits inside perfectly so if you cut both of those together which is what i'm doing and i'll show you in a moment um, uh, yeah, you, um, you you can cut out a frame with just the, the outer sort of um, part. And that's what we're going to do this time with a couple of cards. Um, there's also another one, another rectangle that's smaller again. And a really cute heart. I'm going to use that. I sort of um, 
was trying to get it into one of my designs and I thought, no, I can't quite justify the heart as well, but it's a really radiating stitched heart and there's a circle, a, a sort of a hollow circle and then there's a little circle circle as well. I won't get those off because they haven't been off yet. Okay, so I'll pop those onto a, onto a magnet. You can tell when I pop, pop my dies onto a magnet, it means they're here to stay. So I don't use magnets on stamps on dies that I think, oh yeah, I reckon you're going to get sold. But uh, yeah, no, I think these are going to stay, so they'll get a magnet of their own. Okay, so oh, I'll keep that out. So we're going to, I'll show you how to cut one frame. I have actually cut the rest of them, um, but I'll show you how to cut just the first one. I'm going to cut it, and, and don't think too hard far ahead, guys, but I'm going to cut it out of balmy blue. Don't actually need the balmy blue for this first card I'm showing you but I will need it for the second card and the second card is well it's my favorite it's the showstopper um, so you um, I'm doing that last just to keep you hanging around when you should be doing the housework or something what does everyone have on the um, on their menu for today I'm going to do this and then I'm going to what am I going to do? I've got to finish cutting my first batch of February, uh, March fun folds. We can get those out next week. And then I'm going to go and do some gardening, I think. Move some pine bark around. Okay, so as I said, I've got myself a wee bit distracted. Um, we've got the big frame here and then we've got the small frame inside and that will actually cut the, um, the outer frame in two. You'll be left with... And I've got like about a million here that I, um, as I've been playing, you're left with an internal, internal um, that little internal sentiment box, I suppose. But yeah, you can definitely use that. So if this um, if this die makes its way to a class one day soon, you'll probably find that you use the outside one and the inside one on a on a card. Okay, so we'll pop that through. And then as you see, you get the inside one, which is spare. I'll pop that over with the others. And you get this really awesome frame with the stitching. Really nice. So that one, as I say, is going to be used in the, not this next card, but the last card we're going to do. So hang around for that. I'll just pop that back. Oh, my screw has come out I have to get my screw my um alum key out okay so there's our that's the frame so that's basically what you get when you run those through together I'm going to pop that aside you're not going to see that one for a wee while because we're going to do this card first so there's the frame as you can see but it's in white obviously with its lovely detail and I've used the um the two-tone flora suite for the rest of the card so I'll just show you how I've made the rest but as you can see that frame is just really nice so that's what we're using I don't know that the um, radiating dies could be a class all on their own they, they tend to need other things with them as you can see okay so I'm using the two-tone floor up for the flowers and leaves I'm going to use the happy birthday for both the next cards the happy birthday out of artistically inked I just wanted something a little bit blocky and a little bit plainer, so I'm using that happy birthday there. So if you wonder where the sentiments come from. Okay, so I have so I have a plain white cardstock, and again this one's going to be a landscape card, so we're going to keep it lengthways, and I might burnish it with my poor faded bone folder. It's clean though, look how clean it is. It's clean as new, except for that. Okay, and then we've got, I've got a piece of the two-tone or the uh, fancy flora designer series paper. So it's this one here, sort of a combination of um, Fresh Freesia and the um, Oasis, what's that called? Uh, Orchid Oasis. So they're the two inks that I'm going to use in the flowers as well. So that's a piece of designer series paper. So that's just going to sit just straight on top of the cardstock like this. I might just glue that down now. 
it's very pretty on the other side too but I didn't want to introduce any other colors like the green or the yellow so I'm just sticking to that looks a bit like a uh, someone's been out with a paintbrush it's got that sort of texture painted texture here we are okay so this is from the what we just I just showed you the did I keep them out yes the two-tone flora dyes now there is a big beautiful dye there this one which needs to be weeded a bit but I'll weed it when I get back when I finish this cuts a hole like four by six well, it's probably not quite four by six but you know card size background okay so I've cut it once with white cardstock I used half of it on the original card it's actually quite good you can get two cards out of the one cut so I've used half of it there so the bottom half and I've just got the top half I've cut it in half I'm just going to use the top half on the sec on the top card saves a lot of wasting not wasting but saves using a whole piece of um, white and then not actually popping it into your card so that's going to sit on there so it's pretty fine so I'm, I'm going to cheat a wee bit and use double-sided tape if I can find my double-sided tape there it is I'm going to use double-sided tape to to um to, to attach that down to the um to the card base now if you imagine that's going to be there and then that is going to come in over the top so that's basically the look we're going for so I need the double-sided tape sort of in line with that patterned die die cut but it doesn't have to be too close so I'm just popping that there you can use glue this sounds all a bit too complicated for a Sunday a Saturday morning you can use glue but I'm just sort of guesstimating where the edge of that die is going to be and popping some double-sided tape down and it could go horribly wrong but hey it's just paper okay so I'll just get the backings off that and bring that in could use snail as well but I don't have any in the craft room at the moment so um, yeah we won't use snail okay so I'm going to pop that in roughly the center because that's logically where it's got to go and it'll get onto that little stick to that double-sided tape so then we can bring in our frame now the frame has very fine little holes through it obviously where those radiation radiating bits are so if I used glue before and um, being my usual self used way too much glue as I usually do and it all squished through and got everywhere so um, I'm going to use double-sided tape double-sided tape is getting a bit of a workout today because we use it in the next one as well um, yes yeah, so I'm going to use double-sided tape no I'm not no I'm not no you're not Julianne I'm going to pop them up with dimensionals oh well doesn't matter it's a combo sorry I'm going to pop this frame up on dimensionals so it sits up from the um, card a bit that was something I changed late late in the day with the original card and um, <clears throat> obviously I forgot to remind myself that that's what we were doing so I'm going to use dimensionals um, I'm going to use my end bits and my, my edges as well putting it on the other side would be good now if I don't if I take I've got to take those off because obviously if I don't leave that backing on which is tempting it could all just lift away so I'm going to have to take that backing off so it doesn't lift away and I want some more edges but I don't have very many I've used them all I'll we'll just use a combination of actual dimensionals and edges I 
oh, it's good that came off completely so I'll go with that so just pop some dimensionals around the edge there yep, that's probably enough doesn't have to support a house or a highway or a, anything crucial so if those few will do we'll just get rid of the backs I do just throw them on the floor if you're wondering where they're going I just throw them on the floor and I'll bring the vacuum cleaner in this afternoon sometimes if I don't bring the vacuum cleaner in they make their way to the rest of the house it's like these little plastic hexagons sort of follow you wherever you go find them in strange and wonderful places okay so I'm just popping that over the edge of my pattern hopefully sort of straight yep not too bad and that's the frame that we've got there that's really nice I really like that okay so now let's decorate it with some flowers so that's the radiating die I'm going to use as I mentioned a two-toned flora probably should have cut these beforehand but I didn't so I'm going to grab a scrap piece of cardstock which I think is here somewhere nope not there where'd I put it no nope. I did have a piece of cardstock for it especially Right. what I might use is these multitude of inserts that I've got I've got quite a few of them so we'll use them the white ones just to do our die cutting waste not want not okay so as I mentioned I'm using our orchid oasis and our fresh freesia for our flowers and I'm using soft succulent for the leaves so let's I've got all the stamps all blocked up already quite a few of them okay so fresh freesia for the backgrounds of the flowers so there's the big one so I'm not going to use these backings for anything these spare rectangles for anything so just use them and then I've got so that's I'll show you which flowers I'm using shortly so it's actually the second from biggest and then the two middle size uh, the just slightly downsized ones um, just because I think the big oh no, the big one was too no I used the big one and the two medium sized ones and now I'm not going to be able to die cut those let's see how we go so that's their backgrounds I was being clever putting them on the same block but I wasn't as clever as I thought I was then we're going to use the orchid oasis as our highlight color so it's a nice it's a darker purple a richer purple and it's a little bit tricky so I'm going to bring it closer to me because I have to line up the little stamens to get it in the right position I have to see through the plastic to see where it's got to go sometimes it's a wee bit hit and miss so it's not too bad we'll go with that and that's the and then we've got this is the next size one down so this is this one so again you have to line up the dots now this one's I think it's quite tricky because I'm not very not very exact with things sometimes so I'll just do my best and that's all you can ask that one's not too bad as well and then this last one is not easy either can't things be easy 
Here we are. That's not too bad. So that's our three flowers. I'll just bring them a little bit closer just to so you can see. I don't know how I'm going to go die cutting those. I've got them quite close together, but that's okay. They're going to overlap each other anyway. Then I'm going to do some leaves in soft succulent. There's only one leaf in this stamp set. It's quite a little leaf, so I'm going to need three of them. I'll just pop one on there. And then I've got some scraps over here. I'll pop another couple to, to save using all those little squares. Okay, so I'll get my little cut and emboss machine. So this is my baby, my little white baby. I've um, packed the my boho blue one from Celebration. I've packed that away because it's got it's winging to a new home. We've uh, got one in a competition that I was running in my team. So unless you're in my team, you didn't. Um, you haven't missed anything that wasn't particularly um, it wasn't for customers it was for my team so yeah so that has already um, yes been packed up ready to go to the winner so we're back to our favorite little blue one okay so I'll pop that away behind we'll grab our dies that one and that one and that one Yeah. As much as I love the little machine, it's a little bit trickier to just, I find it a wee bit trickier to do multiple dies on because the platform's a wee bit smaller. I'm going to do it in two runs, at least, maybe even three. Of course, you can always use your masking tape or your washi tape or something to hold those in place. But I can never lay my hands on it when I want it. So, yeah, so that's our big one. There's one of our leaves. And I'll do the other two. And that one is that one. It's always a matter of trying to work out which way they go. Rotate it until it seems to fit. I thought that one would go there, but it doesn't. Okay. Let's hit it that way. No. There's the pointy one. Pointy one's there. I often find like a, a landmark that works. So, you know, if there's a pointy one or one that looks a bit like a mountain or one that looks a bit got a distinctive bump in it you can always line that up with the die that's that one and the last one just get rid of those so I don't lose them so this is the last one side as well and I'm going to just those last two leaves I'm just going to fussy cut them it's quicker than running it through I think And one last bit, cut that a bit little, I can't get a handhold on it. That's one. And the last one. 
probably would be quicker to pop it through the embossing machine, but anyway, that's all good. Just to show you can't you can cut these out without having the dies as well. So okay, there we are. Cool. So there's our three flowers and our three leaves. So if we bring back our little frame, make sure I get it the right way up. That's that whisk that way. Okay, so I'm going to have the larger flower sitting sort of part on the frame and part on the inside. So I don't want to cover up too much of our pretty pattern die inside so and then I'll pop these two flowers in and behind like that and then pop the leaves in and around as well so I'm going to pop dimensionals on this first big flower pop one out there which I know is going to be on the inside of the frame and then I'm going to pop glue on two bits that are going to be actually on the frame so they're like that off there so put that on there okay so that one's sort of sitting up and away from the backing and I'm going to glue these little guys in In and tuck them in behind a wee bit. Yeah. There we are. He's in a bit too far, but that's okay. I'll live with that. Okay, we'll pop our leaves in. I'm going to pop two leaves on the outside. She says just checking her original design. Yep, two leaves in here behind the big flower. And then the last one, just in that gap between those two on the, in there. And I love the way adding, and I've said this multiple times, I love the way that adding the leaves lifts the design. It's lovely. The green's always a pretty contrast to the pinks and the soft colours. There we go. Okay, so that's the flowers. And the lid on my glue or we're going to have a glue disaster I'm going to bring in just a touch of Wink of Stella I probably should have done that before I put them on but that's all right just on the, the flowers just like this oh oh we've had a Wink of Stella explosion I squeezed too hard. That's all right. Oh, it's gone there as well. That's all right. I suppose you could have worse explosions in the craft room than a wink of stellar explosion, couldn't you? Yeah, don't keep squeezing, girls. Not, uh, not a good thing to do. There we are. That's okay. Not too bad. Got a bit of stellar over here that I probably didn't anticipate, but that's okay. Cool. All right, so that's a little bit of... Stella on just about everything there. It was oozed out all over the place. I'm going to grab um, a wee, um, just a, a um, just a inch. Oh, I had some here, like a half inch piece of end piece, which we've always got, haven't we? From making our cards, we've always got that end piece that's half an inch or three quarters of an inch. I'm going to use my happy birthday that we've already mentioned and I'm going to pop that on there. I'm going to cut this down. It's a little bit wider than half an inch. I don't want it bigger than half an inch. So I'll pop my happy birthday in first. Now this is the Orchid Oasis, a beautiful dark colour. I'll bring in my trimmer wherever I've left that. Over here, I might do it with a 
forgive the crash. I don't do it with my guillotine. So pop that there. That's about it. Maybe a bit more. There we are, that's perfect. Okay, so we've got our happy birthday on a strip of paper there. I'm going to trim it down at this end so I can bring in my little banner banner punch which I have got out here we are so this is our double banner punch which is very very handy for this sort of thing I'm going to just banner that there we are leave that end slightly long so I can tuck that in and under the flowers it is a little bit too long so I'm going to trim that down just a bit I want to put that in under there that's it and then across to the right hand side that's my happy birthday again grab some dimensionals and this one with a, not that it needs a lot of bling but I am going to bring in a wee bit of bling I'm going to use the the opaque opaque adhesive gems I think they're called or something like that I'll have to bring them out here we are so that's our happy birthday across to the left there that's really nice and our bling here's me saying I was going to keep everything together so I could be organized did I not bring them over oh, I thought I did I'm just looking where my bling lives. It's not there. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. No bling. All right. We'll use. We'll use. We'll use. Ah, here they are. Behind me. They're behind me. The opaque basic uh, adhesive back gems which as I said my favorites in the craft room at the moment um, I used the, um, the dark one the gorgeous grape I think on the original card but I think I actually prefer the um, the uh, fresh freesia I might give those a go now um, just to see mm, big one. Although they do tend to um, disappear into the paper a wee bit, so maybe the dark ones are better. We'll see. There we are. Okay, so that's that one. That's with our beautiful, um, I said, two tone flora um, plus that radiating um, stitch, radiating stitches dies sort of uh, turned into a frame. So that's. The first card with that so i really like it as i say the frame the stitch things are very good i don't know you could do well maybe you could do a card just with them but they definitely go so well with all the other um the parts of our current range last one is my absolute favorite so please if you're here please stay around just for the last one i'm just going to tidy up a wee bit just pop everything behind me i'm going to keep that Happy birthday punch, uh, um, uh, sta uh, stamp, because we're going to keep using that one. So I'll pop the inks over there. Inks can go over there. I'll pop the card behind me. There we go. What else don't I need? I need lots of double-sided tape. Lots and lots and lots. I don't need the Stella anymore. Let's just pop you there and that there. Okay, yes, this is my favourite. I can't wait for you to see it. I'm keeping you on tender hooks, I know. Just going to pop that up there and hope it doesn't make too much of a crashy noise. There we are. Put that behind me. I don't need that. Okay, 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 okay. 
Oh, don't need those. So I'll pop all these other ones, the, the um, online exclusives over behind me as well. Oh, just found my pointy thing. Found that. I've been missing for ages. Here we go. Uh, I need my banner punch. I don't need that, but they can stay. Okay. Now, one of my favourite, 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 favourite things in the current mini catalogue is our rain and shine paper. The little guys in it are just so cute and the little landscapes with the flowers and the bright colours, just wonderful. So when I, this actually came to me while I was waking up this morning, I was sort of like half asleep, half awake and I thought about the frames and this is the one we just cut. Remember we cut one with Balmy Blue and I thought wouldn't that just be so nice with our little critters from our rain and shine paper and the actual sort of daisies and sky and everything and the little loose daisies so that's what I've done and that's those little loose daisies in behind there with that frame just makes a beautiful shaker card I haven't actually got it on a card base yet I couldn't work out whether to go a bigger card base like a bigger standard or just to make it a smaller note um, note card size I think I'm leaning towards just making it a note card size because it's, it's slightly smaller I think it's about a five and a quarter by three and seven eight something like that so yeah so let's make this one together now as well okay so what I have is obviously I've got my loose daisies which if you did my launch earlier on in the year you've got tons and tons of those left over and I have what else do I have? A piece of, I have a piece of the designer series paper. So this is the one with the, the little, um, there's a hill with some flowers and stuff. So I've cut that to size and I'll tell you the size. I'll pop all the measurements because we've got a fair few measurements today. I'll pop them up on my website. So that's five and, oh no, four and a half by three and a quarter. So I've just picked the part of the little landscape that I wanted now when I'm doing when I'm normally doing shaker cards we use our um, foam strips but with these little loose daisies they are just so thin I thought they would probably swim too much if I used I mean it would have been a million times easier if I'd used this but I just thought it would be too thick and they would swim around too much and they'd sort of all get stuck underneath and they'd probably turn sideways and it'd be a bit of a bit of a nightmare so I didn't want to do that so what I've done I've got our our one frame which is our little blue frame for the front but I've cut three extras because when I was cutting them I think that the width of those three sort of glued together um, is about the width of the daisy so I've used just, I just had some, while I was experimenting with colours, I just cut, because this was originally going to have the that one, which I thought was a bit bright. So I've been experimenting with colours. So I've cut a few spares just from scrap paper. And this white one, which is thicker, that's actually from, I cut that from, we've all got them, the white cardboard that backs our designer series paper. So I've just cut some out of that. And that sort of gives it that extra width that we might need. So I think three layers, maybe four, is about as, as um, thick as you need to go. And then I've got a wee bit of um, obviously some um, window sheet there as well to continue the, the theme happening. So what I'm going to do first is just get some double-sided tape and just uh, attach these all together. So because I want to restrict my loose daisies inside that frame I'm actually going to put the double-sided tape hard up on the edge and the reason that is I don't want the little daisies to get caught so you know if I if I put the double-sided tape further away then there'd be a bit of a gap there and our little daisies are going to get caught um, or could get caught in that gap and not do what they're supposed to do by jiggling around and looking pretty Maybe I'm, over, maybe I'm overthinking it. It wouldn't be the first time, but that was my logic. I don't do a lot of shaker cards. We did one for the launch recently, but that was been the first one for a long time. Anyway, here we go. So that's this is the first layer. So it's just going to quickly just glue these or 
stick these together and you'll see the width that we get. That's the blue one I want to keep, don't you? Um, line them up. I'm going to line their frames up so that the frames, so that the, the windows sort of line up with each other. It's a bit tricky if you're slightly off with your die cutting, but um, that's not too bad. You can always trim the edges if you want to. So saying that, it's probably more important that you get the internal frames lined up and then you can trim the edges around the outside. She knows. I wasn't going to do as many cards today because I actually spent, I don't know, I've told some, some of you, I actually spent a glorious afternoon yesterday sitting in the sun at a local vineyard with my mum and my sister drinking their wine and eating their food and chatting and had a little bit of a cry we talked about dad and had a bit of a cry but it was a happy cry and um, yeah we had a lovely afternoon and then by the time I got home it was late afternoon and I thought oh gosh I haven't actually decided on any cards to do tomorrow so it was a bit of a rush to, to um organize that first one um, and uh, and but then these two later cards came to me um, this morning when I was lying in bed ready to get up so yeah it's been a funny day as far as that's concerned um, it was yesterday but it was a, such a nice day that it wasn't hot hot but it was sunny and warmish um, and uh, yeah I was the responsible adult. You'll all be interested to know. I stuck to um, soft drinks. Oh, I had, okay, I did have one glass of wine but and it was very nice. But after that I went teetotal and, um, and drove home. But uh, it was a lovely afternoon. So if you're ever down here in Tassie, let me know and I will um, recommend this vineyard to you was nice it was on a hill and you could see up over the valley that it was looking over and um, they had uh, part of their grounds was set up with like um, bean bags and things and people were just sitting there sort of having not even just having a meal they were just having a casual drink with some platters and and uh, yeah it was really 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 nice anyway so as I say if you're ever in Tassie let me know and um, I will give you the details Okay, so I've got my window sheeting here. It's been cut um, bigger than the, the gap in my frame. So I'm just going to pop that there first. Excuse me, my phone is going off. And as soon as I talk about my mum, I know it'll be my mum. I tell her that I do um, I tell her that I do videos in the mornings, but she, she must need something. Just bear with me. Don't forget the blackberries. Um, and there's a message there as well. She's been trying to get me on various think, media. Uh, no, that's all right. It wasn't that important. She bought some blackberries from a lady that she met somewhere. I have no idea where she met this lady, and um, she wants me to make jam. So that was that was the great emergency. My mum, thank you, mum. Okay, so now I have added that talking about my mum and wineries I've added that um, piece of window window um, pane what is it called window window sheet and again I've popped the double-sided tape as close to the edge of that frame as the inside edge of that frame as I could so those little guys when I pop them in there they are not going anywhere so I'm going to pop the outside frame on so this is our bar our balmy blue one which is our um, main colour 
and that's going over the top of that so it hides the edges of our window sheet obviously much easier Julianne if you'd get some snail adhesive out but anyway it's all good now at the moment the online exclusives are out now the thing with online exclusives is that they're not tied to a specific catalog which means they can come and they can go so some will be while stocks last which means that once they're gone they're gone some will be uh, will come back will be replenished that's what i'm saying they will be replenished and come back so but none of us including um, us demonstrators don't know which ones that is so if you see something and i've gone slightly off the edge there that's all right it's a pretty color um yes so if you see something you like please don't don't um uh don't hesitate or you may not get it if you see something you like and it becomes unorderable unorderable not orderable um please reach out to me and i can tell you from my background reports i can tell you whether it's coming back so if you see something you like and you go oh goodness i've missed it it's already gone just reach out let me know and i will tell you when it will be back and um you know you, you know if or if it's been retired so anyway that's what we'll go okay so i've popped some of those really pretty little loose daisies in there and again and i'm going to just seal that up with our piece of beautiful designer series paper with our little flowers and again the double-sided tape's getting a, a bit of a go pop that on this one So as I say, I haven't popped this onto a card base yet, but I think I would just cut the card base to size so you don't actually see it around the edge of the card. So you, all you see is the frame. Um, it'll make it a slightly smaller than usual card, but I think it would be so cute as a children's card. Children or teenagers or something like that. I think this would be just the cutest. I made myself jump then I thought I'd put my double-sided tape on the wrong side but I don't think I have I think I've done it right so there now although I do have to flip it over there we are and that seals sort of acts a double point it seals all those little guys in there as well there we are so that's the shaker card and as I say that's really just thick enough for those little guys to be trapped in there so I've made shaker cards before where that's too high and then when you go like that they just all flop to the bottom because there's nothing to hold them up but if I hold that up like that some of them as you can see have been trapped in there so it's not too wide it's just right enough to shake but enough to keep them um, keep them in you know in, in interesting positions when the things on display display Last part of this is I'm going to grab one of our little happy characters from the designer series paper and I've already fussy cut him out. I use the little um, tortoise. Tortoise, yes, I suppose it's a tortoise, turtle, tortoise for the first card. He's quite cute and he's got a little flower. I'm going to use this little happy bunny here who's jumping in a puddle. I'm going to pop him on the outside of the, of the frame. So he's going to be partly on the frame and partly on the um, the window sheet. I'll pop him with some dimensionals as well. Yes, but you can, if you're interested in joining Stamping Up, and um, I've mentioned many times about the benefits of that, being part of our community, being part of my team, um getting a discount which is always nice um yeah so getting um products early which is always nice um if you fancy uh, being part of the team you can put online exclusives into your starter kit oh, hubby's home so we'll finish this up and that'll be it okay so i'm popping this little guy here 
as I say, partly on the window sheet, partly on the frame. Not want to cover up too much of our little scene. There we go. He'd be a cute. He would be a cute Easter card. Who was that? That was Evelyn. Yeah, I do. He would be a cute Easter card. Uh, and then I'm going to just make this a happy birthday card. What we did with the first one, but happy Easter would work too. Don't think I have it. Happy Easter. I'm not into big into Easter cards. Uh, I'm going to use balmy blue ink. For my happy birthday just to keep the happy happy brightness going mango melody would be nice too but it's maybe a wee bit light and this time i'm going to pop that there i'm going to trim this one down again as well hey stevie oh crash i need somebody to invent a rack for my um trimmer and various bits and bobs. Trim this one down to about half an inch. Yep, that's close. Again, I'm going to use my banner punch just to punch. I think it's going to have to be this end this time. This end, the happy end, is going to snuggle just in under him there, just under his hand, just like that. And then off to the right hand side, just like that. So I'm going to pop that on some dimensionals as well, just because also glue's a bit tricky with this window sheeting. Glue tends to slip around a bit. And that is pretty much done. I'll, as I say, I'll cut myself a couple of little um, note card size cards, card bases, and it really won't matter what's, what colour they are because I'm not going to actually show them at all. They're just going to be in and behind. They're exactly the same size, so probably white, I reckon, so then I don't have to pop an envelope, uh, pop another layer inside. So there we are. Isn't that the cutest? That is just the cutest. That is the cutest thing I've done for a long time. I really, really like that. So that's our little happy guy with his puddle. He's splashing in some puddles and some pretty flowers and stuff. And we've got our little cutest little turtle as well. So, yeah, really, really nice and, and really bright colours. And it uses some of those loose daisy embellishments that you've probably got reams of, If you, as I say, if you did my... Um, my, my launch um, this year okay so that's the three cards thank you for sticking with me today an hour and 23 minutes I don't you ever usually craft this long I usually like to be well and truly done by 11 o'clock but I'll bring back the ones that we've done so you can see maybe tell me your favorites if you've um, if you've got a favorite and we've got our little shaker card our um, tropical leaves and our pretty two-tone flora so there so i don't know if you've got a favorite out of those i think i think for cuteness overload i think that one has to be my favorite but i like the others as well so anyway thanks for joining me today um have a great weekend i hope you can stay in australia it's hard to say dry warm wet dry probably more dry than anything else or cool anywhere so um yeah so stay safe anyway wherever you are and um, i will see you all again during the